Jason Shute here from Shoot Balance Dog Training. Developing a productive uh, play relationship with your dog may be one of the most important things you'll ever do with them. We use play for a number of different reasons. Uh, it's fun, it's exciting, it's great exercise for the dogs, uh, it's great relationship development, and it builds value on the handler. We also can use play as a reward for our obedience work moving forward in our dog's training. And it teaches our dogs to listen to us and to pay attention to us while they are in a high state of arousal. I did a demonstration and talk uh, about play at a workshop in New Delhi, India recently. Let's have a look at some of the clips from that session. One is because it's great exercise for the dog. Right? It is a huge uh, bonding experience for your dog. So if you want to develop a better relationship with your dog, play is one of the best ways to do that. Generally, we think all the toys are the same, most people. Right? So we give the dog a toy, and the dog might, you know, like a, a ball or a rope or whatever, some chewy type of thing. We just say, okay, you know, here, chew this. And the dog will go and maybe play with it for 10, 20 seconds and then it becomes boring. So they walk away from that and they will go to something that's more interesting for them, right? So it's about how we build up the value of that toy. So there's two types of toys. One is interactive, one is self-satisfying. A self-satisfying type of toy, like uh, you know the Kong toys that you can stuff food in, right? And you can give it to the dog. The dog will spend time with that because it's a food-oriented toy, mm -hmm. right? That means that I don't have to be interacting with the dog for them to be spending time with that toy. Does that make sense? That's a food yeah. thing, right? So the other type of toy is what we call an interactive toy. That is a ball, that is a chew rope, a tug rope, something like that, where if I just give that to the dog, the dog will become bored of that very quickly because there's no interaction, right? There has to be interaction and play involved with that toy for the dog to keep interested in it. And so I have to, I have to commit to spending time with the dog, interacting with them at that moment. Toys like this, right? The rope, right? A ball of some kind like this. These are interactive toys. Okay, a lot of people will make the mistake of giving this to their dog, the dog's barking or doing something here, take this. And they let the dog chew this. But the dog's gonna get bored of this within 30 seconds because there's nothing happening. The, the toy is not alive, right? When the dog is doing stuff like jumping at you or gnawing on your hands or doing that kind of stuff, they're, they're telling you that they wanna interact. So if I give him something that, or give the dog something that is non-interactive, that's a real letdown for the dog. I have to give them to do something interactive with them. Okay, so this is a really good way to tire out a dog, to give your dog lots of stimulation. These are interactive toys. Oh yes. What a good girl. Yes. Beautiful. Right? You'll notice that when I'm playing with her, here, basically, I'm just moving it, right? Side to side. She's pulling back, it's interactive. Okay, so I'm gonna let her have it. I'm gonna let her have it. Yes. Good girl. So I'm not asking her to drop it immediately. I'm just going to let her enjoy it. Let her enjoy the interaction here. When she gives me a good fight, I'm going to let her have it. The moment I let her have it, I'm going to run away from her because that will that will encourage her to bring it to me. But what I don't want to do is let the dog have it and walk away with it. So I'm playing, the game is moving, moving, moving. When I stop it and take the energy out, she will let it go. So it's no longer alive. Well, we teach them through play to even though they are absolutely uh, overly excited and on fire, that they have to listen to us, right? So we can get them, build them up, take them up to 100 of them, 
cut them down to zero, right? We, if we do this consistently, we condition the dogs to pay attention to us even when they're freaking out. That is very good control. Okay, so we like that in dog training, right?